morning and welcome to another edition of Political Scope. I'm your host for this program, Paul McAdam. With me today is the Honorable Minister of Local Government, Mr. Norman Whitaker. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, Paul. Today we're going to look at your ministry with specific focus on two areas. The first is the Physical Transfers Act. Could you just go back in time and give me some history as to how it all began? What prompted it? Well, thank you very much, Paul. In order to do that, let me say from the inception that what we have been doing at the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development since I have been there at the Ministry comes out of the People's Progressive Party's political manifesto of 2011 and the commitment we made to the Guyanese public in terms of how we improve the way we deliver services to the people in the 65 NDCs and the municipalities and even the CDCs across Guyana. We resolved, among other things, to strengthen capacity at the level of the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development because if we are to provide oversight services, if we are to guide the local authorities in terms of how they deliver services, then we ought to know. And so one of the areas that we determined we should work on is in strengthening the capacity at the level of the ministry. Now one can do all of that and still not get the desired results if we do not simultaneously work on building capacity Within the NDCs. at the local level too. Yes. That's right, at the level of the NDCs and even the um, municipalities. And mm -hmm. so we have been doing that also. Now, another area that we thought we needed to focus on is the local government legislation. And here you mentioned the Fiscal Transfers Act. Okay. Because that act allows us to provide resources to the NDC using objective criteria, as distinct from automatic allocation, having a pool of money and allocating it equally without regards to uh, land mass, population size, resources, ability to, to utilize the resources, etc. And so that is how the issue of the Fiscal Transfer Act became very, very important. And I, I want to return to that. There are some other areas, accountability and transparency. Because if you're going to work and you're going to put more resources in the hands of the local authorities, then concomitantly, there is a reasonable expectation that they will account for this money. And by account, I mean record it properly, use it properly, use it in the best interests of the people in the neighborhood, the people in the towns. And that is why from the very inception, you also have to involve them, which brings me to the next area of um, that we dissolve, that we work, focus on, and that has to do with um, reaching out to the public. Through consultations and so on. That's right. Public mm -hmm. awareness of what you do. Because we found that one of the challenges faced by the council was the lack of knowledge, the lack of information on the part of residents with respect to what they do. In fact, more than this, what they are supposed to be doing. Okay. And so often residents expect the NDC to construct a road when indeed it was and never intended NDC, that they can do that. They don't have the uh, resources, both human, capital, etc. And so we resolved to look at the area of accountability and transparency. Coming out of the People's Progressive Party political manifesto 2011, we also resolved to collaborate more. Collaboration makes it possible for you to garner more resources, to reach out. Okay. Collaboration with the other sector ministries, collaboration with other agencies, with the private sector, for example, so that more things can be done. And so what we have been doing, Paul, is to ensure that we put into action the commitments that was given 
by the People's Progressive Party because we were part of that determination. Mm -hmm. And we have a responsibility to the public to work to ensure that happens. And so the Fiscal Transfers Act was one of the areas of focus. Uh, there was consensus in the parliament on that piece of legislation. Okay. In fact, there was a special select committee that looked at the legislation, provided opportunity not only for members of the government side, who, those who represented government on the special select, but also those in the opposition. And other stakeholders. Yes, they, 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 can, they were allowed to make their contributions. So what that did is several things. One is to arrive at a formula for determining what resources each NDC gets. And so issues to do with population, issues to do with land mass, issues to do with um, performance in terms of collectibles. In other Which words, collecting rates and taxes, the rate that's of return right, and that's so on. That's right. That's right. Their own and budgetary. That's right. Yes. And that is why um, one of the performance indicators has to do with the performance of the NDC in the prior year. And so what the NDC in the municipality will get in the form of government subvention for 2015 will depend on those variables that I just mentioned, population, land mass, and so on, when you, you activate the formula. But it will also be a function of your performance in 2014 because you are required not only to prevent, present your budget estimates of 2015 mm -hmm. by a given date, I think it's November the 15th, but you're required also to submit your actual achievements. Your deliverables. For 2014. And the percentage of work they have they actually That's right. accomplished. That's right. Okay. So what is examined is your budget for 2014 set against the actual performance for 2014. And so what we found is, and, and many NDCs were happy about it, many NDCs were able to get as much as 60-70% more than the 3 million that they were getting all the time, while some didn't because they underperformed. And so when we looked at the overall performance of local government bodies, there was, in my own humble opinion, based on the facts before me, significant improvement, um, more resources, and these resources enable them to do more works. Within the NDCs, there is a focus on providing um, infrastructure support, maintenance of infrastructure road bridges. There is also a focus on sanitation, and this includes um, garbage collection. Um, this includes also um, some amount of weeding of vegetation, etc. Mm -hmm. And this is done in collaboration. If you know, you would have noticed that we have the CIIP, the Community okay. Infrastructural Improvement Program. program right. And that program focuses on drainage and focuses also on the cemeteries. So this is a form of support and assistance. This is a form, I see it as collaboration. Mm -hmm. I see it as a CIIP, which is being run by uh, Central Housing, um, supporting the work of the NDC, allowing the NDC to use its limited resources to focus on other things. I have said to them, and they concur, that we want you to focus on sustaining the cleanup that we have begun. And I, we're going to talk more about that, that right. la later. Yes. And so fiscal transfers is about providing more resources. But I think that our viewers need to know more than that. The Fiscal Transfers Act allows the local government bodies now, with the minister's approval, um, to source funding, donor funding, grants. So they could check either organizations yes, they can or businesses if they want UNDP's, to get. UNDP's, mm -hmm. you know, CEDA. They can approach these agencies with the minister's approval um, for support. They can also bid for contracts at the regional level, 
they can bid for contracts. Um, so this is another area of um, support that the uh, Fiscal Transfers Act allows them. Um, besides that, they can also develop their own projects mm -hmm. and seek source funding from government to finance those projects, especially if these projects are aimed at creating employment and, and providing revenue for those who are employed. And enhancing the community. And, and in the community. That's right. right. And so these are some of the benefits that come out of the Fiscal Transfers um, Act. Um, may I mention also that we are working to activate the District Tender Board. You know, we have the National Procurement and Tender right. Administration Board. Um, we also have at the level of the regional, the regional tender boards. And um, they look at contracts up to just under nine million, um, eight million nine hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. Um, but we are working to have the district and the board, which the the fiscal accountability act makes provision for, activated um, because presently a lot of work in the region is left to the regional tender board. And of course, the RDCs will put their work first. Right. And so the NDCs are often required to wait. On the RDCs? On the RDC. Okay. And so the district and the board will allow us to be able to um, accelerate mm -hmm. the pace of implementation of projects. Which cut down on waiting time, which is always a problem. People That's say right. we want this That's done. Right. We don't want the NDCs at the last minute in the last quarter. Um, Hustling to do something. Yes, yeah, sometimes you compromise quality when you do, the speed, do it speed, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Clean up. You mentioned it just now. How has that been going? I know um, you had a few hiccups, but overall I think it's been yeah. going reasonably well. Um, I know from what we can see, the cemetery yes. is a shining example of what could be done. Um, how has that been going overall? Well, the, the implementation has been going well. We are down to the last five communities. Uh, that's a work in progress. Um, may I say very early that in this discourse on this subject matter, that I think out there, people's expectations with respect to what the project would deliver uh, went a little too high for some, you know. <laughs> uh, I think people expected every square inch Mm -hmm. of Georgetown to be cleaned up. But in fact, the focus was on the sanitation, the environmental aspect. The focus was on improving the aesthetics. If you recall, there was a lot of talk about the way Georgetown looked, for example. It's an embarrassment to us. It's, it doesn't look nice to tourists. It doesn't encourage investment, etc. So the cleanup focus on that. And so we put together a team of technical people and also people from local government, private sector, city council too, mm -hmm. to determine, based on the amount allocated, the areas of intervention. And they came up with the areas, the canals. We couldn't do all the canals, and so mm -hmm. they prioritized it. The main drainage canals. You That's right. Yes. The drains, um, the cemetery, et cetera, they determined. Mm -hmm. The next important decision we made was that, look, if we are to create the kind of public awareness we want, and if we are to sustain this project, we have to involve people from the community in its implementation. And that is why we had these consultations. That is why arising out of these consultations, we asked the people themselves to form their groups to decide on their coordinator. Okay. And so. This was not about giving out big contracts to people where one person or so will probably get the pocket the most of it. Mm -hmm. We wanted... More community uh, involvement. That's right. right. Because we feel that people's sense of pride in their community will be restored. Look, I tell you, Paul, I recall that the first area we worked in was all by stuff. And I, I know people came out for that. There. I know. And I meeting know. the young men in, in the trenches there. And they're from all by stuff. Yeah. They didn't even know that there's concrete down there. 
You that, know? that was the amazing thing. A yeah. lot of people don't know that. And, and you recall that many were saying, hey, this is the first time we saw the cemetery. We didn't know they had so many tombs there. So the expectation is that that pride in the implementation will go over. And we will want to ensure that we maintain our communities in the same way. Of course, this requires resources. Mm -hmm. Of course, we say to the local authorities, the municipalities, and the NDCs, you have to maintain this. So and that's why you start. Yeah, and they maintain. They must maintain. But the communities, the people who have been involved in the implementation who have expressed an interest of being part of the sustenance, we welcome them to work with the local authority, to work with us at the ministry to maintain this. And so that, for us, is a challenge. I met with a number of stakeholders, including the private sector, the city council, etc., a number of sector ministries, natural resource and environment, public works, and we resolve to ensure that this thing doesn't go back to where it was. And that is why, Paul, we have to fix some of the city council trucks. That is why we made available to the city council and to a number of public places, schools, health centers, hospital compound, containers. The bins and so on. We yes. are acquiring some more, and so more will be put, especially in the market area shortly. You will see more bins in those areas. That is why we focus a lot on the markets, the drainage, the, the, the washroom facilities, et cetera, uh, border, um, middle road, La, um, La Penitence, we focus on those areas. Mm -hmm. That is why we give brush cutters to every NDC. I hope they use it. <laughs> yes, and I advise, and I see they have been doing it, that mm -hmm. they make a provision in their 2015 estimates okay. to meet operational costs of their brush cutters, to meet operational costs of their tractors and trailers, which they'll be getting shortly. So they're actually, some of them are actually hiring people for these people? they hire. Okay, yes. Good. But we, we, we're going to make these things available to them. The procurement process has been gone through, but these things are being shipped from abroad. Mm -hmm. I say this because um, I want the public to know that our focus, we didn't wait till the project is almost completed in terms of its implementation to determine that we have to sustain it. That was always uppermost in our mind. And that is why we sought to give these brush cutters. We sought to acquire more bins, garbage bags, etc. That is why we acquired excavators, which we will make available to the RDCs. That's the Regional Democratic Council for use in the neighborhood democratic councils and the municipalities. Okay. And that is why we're going to be giving to the NDC tractors and trailers to move the stuff mm -hmm. and to do other things. And when not in use, they can use it to generate more money for the local government bodies. In an accountable way. In an accountable way. Because <laughs> as I said, <laughs> right. uh, uh, transparency and accountability is our focus. Mm -hmm. One of the areas of focus for 2015. Um, our officers will be going out at greater frequency. Um, we will be very insistent that the NDCs and the municipalities make, submit their financial statements on a monthly basis, which our staff will review. And by the way, we are moving to have our own at the ministry as part of building capacity, our own audit internal department, audit department, internal yes. audit, so that we can go out there and check, make sure that things are going right and where they are not, work with the local authority to improve it. So, in a nutshell, the, whilst the implementation of the cleanup has, in my view and many others, been a good one, um, something we can be proud of, the sustenance of that cleanup is very, very critical, or else that investment would have been a wasted investment. Before, because we're almost out of time, before we go, let's, in the cleanup, for example, say the cemetery. Yeah. That's pretty clear right now. Yeah. What is the plan to make sure that it is in a, it's still in a presentable condition, say, a year from now, or we, two years from now? We had the town clerk, the city engineer, and the city's, the solid waste director as part of our 
meeting and discussion on the sustenance. We have made it clear that that is a statutory responsibility of the City Council. You must make provision in your budget to upkeep it. But notwithstanding that, you need it to involve the communities. They need to reach out. Councillors need to go out there and meet the people, talk with the people, hear from the people what their concerns are, what improvements they'd want to seek. That provides opportunity for you to explain to people whatever limitations you have, whatever encumbrances you have, and build confidence. Mm -hmm. If all you do is stay in a building and quarrel among yourselves, that won't happen. So even though we will help, we at local government will help, that will depend on our budgetary allocations. Mm -hmm. We cannot always be doing that. If we every year are going to have a cleanup, then it might as well we change the law and let government collect the rates and taxes. Right, to so help fund that cleanup. That's right. right. Okay? So we expect the statutory, that what we did would have put the local bodies, the local authority bodies, in a position where they could now take off and do the things that they ought to have been doing. I'm not saying that the council has been doing some work. It's Solid Waste Director has been working. The town clerk has been working. The, the city engineer has been working. But um, they need to intensify their efforts. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to wrap up now, and I want to thanks, you know, say thanks again for joining me yeah. on the program. That has been Political Scope. I was your host, Paul McAdam. Today we had the Minister of Local Government, Norman Whitaker. And the focus was on your ministry. That's right. The Physical Transfer Act and the cleanup. Yes, and I hope uh, people are better placed to understand some of the things that we do, you know. It's not just about going out there and visiting NDCs also. We are very proactive in a number of other areas. I'm glad you mentioned it because people in the community need to know that they also need to be involved, involved. in keeping That's their right. communities clean. That's right. That's right. right. So thanks again and for thank joining me. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks again. Okay. So long. Goodbye.